Welcome to the All About TRH podcast, aka All About the Real Housewives, aka All About the Truth. On today's episode, we give you all the exclusive tea and all that went down on the Rural Housewives of New Jersey reunion taping. And we've never been wrong when it comes to exclusive tea. Get ready because we have a lot to unload exclusively at All About TRH. Hi, Chantel. Hey, Roxanne. Oh my gosh, I feel like we haven't done this. Actually, we did do this while we were on vacation. That's how committed we are to you guys, but where I'm like comfortable at home doing a podcast episode. And this one is going to be crazy. I'm so excited because I barely have heard anything and I think you have all the tea. (laughs) Yes. So Chantal's going to be like the opinion piece. You're going to have an opinion on everything. You do have something to share at the end of this episode, but I feel bad because so many of you guys have been messaging us and uh, on all about Terry H on all about Terry H podcast. And uh, it has been so hard to respond because we were on vacation. Um, I just got back. So I, uh, on top of all about Terry H.com, that is like my side business. I do work a corporate job. So I was at work today. Um, and that's why I have not been able to respond. Please don't take offense, but yeah. So I just came back from vacation. I probably should have took today off, but I didn't. And that's why I haven't responded, but I promised you guys a podcast episode today and we're going to deliver, especially because we haven't really been active since we've both been out of town. Um, Chantel, how was your trip? How was your birthday? My birthday was good. Oh, actually, like we we flew home and stuff. So, you know, it yeah, it's on funny because I flew on my birthday. You flew home from your birthday, and I no. think we both said like next time let's not travel on our actual birthdays because it's kind of a bus kill the whole day. It just doesn't feel like your birthday. However, I feel like birthdays don't feel like your birthdays once you're past like twenty two. No, it's like, not true. Yeah. Oh my god, really? I think it doesn't. Yeah, you do what you want on your birthday, and you make it feel good. Okay. Okay. Well, I mean, I just get depressed because <laughs> I'm getting older. So we're both officially 31 years old, you guys. I know. I'm so, oh my God, I can't. Mm-hmm. But I went to Marco Island. I know you guys have requested to see more of us just because you hear our voices. So I did share some pictures of Chantal on her birthday. Chantal shared some pictures of me on my birthday. So I hope you guys, we even have a highlight so you guys can see who we actually are. Because I'm super interested in seeing who the people I listen to are. Um, so just so that you guys are aware, but I had such a beautiful time in Marco Island it, with my family, best memories ever. If you guys ever want to do a family trip, I definitely recommend taking your kids to Marco Island or even just as a couple. I remember Chantal was supposed to come and then she canceled because she was like, I don't want to be with your kids, but <laughs> that is not what happened I at swear. all. No, yeah. no, not true whatsoever. Whatever. But that probably is a little bit true because I don't want to have to be with the kids if I don't have to, unless it's like a full family vacation. But yeah. Yeah. But I loved go. Austin. Austin was so fun for me. I think it's, it has, it gives you everything you need in like a city. At the end of the day, city trips are like city trips, but I felt it had everything. It was like a little bougie, a little nature, a little barbecue, food, um, unreal. I got so much sun, by the way. So the weather was beautiful. Was it nice where you were at? Yeah, I, we had like a we had a we had to go to the pool two of the days because it was so hot during the day, and I was like, I'm not exploring anymore. Let's go to the pool. Yeah, it was amazing. Chantal, send me pictures. We'll share more pictures from our trip on um, All About Terry podcast so you guys could see it. But I feel like we need to get to it because if you're new here, welcome. Um, yes. You guys, yes, if you're new here, welcome. But I know this is the moment that you've been waiting for. All the tea on the Real Housewives of New Jersey reunion. Never before heard tea that we confirmed with multiple people to ensure we have the story straight, including a former Real Housewives of New Jersey producer, are you ready, Chantel? I'm so excited. Like, can you? I'm so excited. Wow. Okay, good. This is like our Super Bowl. I know. I swear. And just so you guys know, if you go on allaboutTRH.com and you look at exclusives, me and Laura, um, Laura, again, is my All About TRH partner on the website. And we have so many exclusives. We've never been wrong. If you look at any of our exclusives with like reunions or anything, we've never been wrong. We don't just confirm with like people or like if you guys think we're talking directly to the housewives. No, we talk to people who were watching. You know, who uh, like 
producers for you know are involved in the show and a former producer who is very close with current producers so we talk to everybody to make sure we get the story as straight as possible um sometimes though is it true that sometimes it just doesn't air though like say if yeah. you drop something right now you mm-hmm. we might hear it but it, it didn't it doesn't air because of like the way they yeah edit. what sucked on the last reunion what we got and what was a big vocal point was like the um the rumor about Jackie and Evan and it coming from Margaret. It was like a big point at the reunion. It was revealed that Margaret was the one who put it out there. But I think producers took it as like, we're kind of tired of the storyline just because Jackie dragged it longer than it should have. And they didn't anticipate for that to happen. And so they didn't put that, they didn't show us that. And we put that out there and like, it was like a big thing and they did not even put it on yeah see um, that pisses me off I, mean, I know I put, we want to see everything but I get it but it's just like wow I still think we, that's a big deal for that yeah. to come from Margaret like why would you as producers not want us to know that and I've asked that question and you know it's all about like the narrative and whatever but I want to start off with what happened after the reunion okay so after the reunion Dolores Polly Teresa Louie Nate and Danielle they all go to dinner Jennifer goes to a pizza joint We're hearing she had an early appointment to take her father because she's like the caretaker for her parents in the sense where she makes the appointment, she drops them off, things of that sort. So she, and probably like it's 420, she probably was like, let me eat some pizza and gets high. And that's exactly what she said. (laughs) She did say that in her story. Um, but someone messaged us on Instagram. They asked if Louie was at the restaurant. I guess Teresa didn't tag him, but I can report a hundred percent. He was present with them. He was at the restaurant. I don't know who reported that he wasn't, he was, but before I get into the juicy stuff, it's important to note that Dolores, Jennifer, and Teresa, they stuck with each other. They had each other's backs. Teresa did make it known that she didn't want anyone to step in for her. And she was capable of speaking for herself and she wanted to do that because she didn't want the others to say that she needed a mouthpiece. Oh, so yeah, everyone, I know I would have preferred like people to step in just because yeah. I, I like that. But everyone respected it. Teresa and Dolores left stronger than ever. I'm not sure why people are questioning this or why people are DMing me, uh, DMing us, asking about this. Um, Why in the world would they go to dinner together if they were on bad terms? Do you really think that Teresa would do that? They've been in contact even today. They're both closer than ever. We've had, we had to reach out to multiple people to confirm that. I'm not sure who the hell's trying to put the narrative of it being otherwise, but they are better than ever they had a great dinner um they were drained for sure but they would never go to dinner if their friendship was like on on the horizon like something was especially going on. after a reunion that yeah. ends at like 9 30 p.m like no one wants to sit next to each other that they're not friends with or that they're mad at or they're upset or their friendship is on the line no none of that happened dolores jennifer and Teresa actually they they were like loyal as heck to each other i just want you guys to know the cast is still very much divided right now probably worse than ever um on the right side of andy was melissa she was right next to him then it went margaret rachel and you know obviously this made melissa happy because she was seated at the end um on season 13 and should remember <laughs> that point you made or season 12 about her being you know like uh, an og basically yeah yeah, and you said, like... Like, no one OG. should be... Like, it's embarrassing if other people that are new beat you out, and then you're, like, basically an OG, and you're sitting on the freaking end. Like, that's embarrassing. Yeah, exactly. And then on the left side, it went Teresa next to Andy, then Jennifer, then Dolores, lastly, Danielle. Are you surprised by the seating chart? No, not at all. Okay. The the, the seats make so much sense to me. I feel like And Danielle that's how it's divided. Should, well, I, well, no, but I feel like Danielle should have been closer to Andy. Oh, the, no, she's too, she's too new. I guess, but the person who s- sits, like, far out, like, they didn't really have much to contribute to the season. That's typically how it goes. And um, But sometimes, they, like, I, when I'm watching OC, um, what's her name? Um, Heather? Heather? Yeah. Is it? yeah. She's been sitting on the, she always sits on the end, and yeah, she always contributes true. a lot. So I think it's just, I think it's either, like, the two people mean people on the rest. It really doesn't matter after that, I think. Yeah. Well, so... Yeah, that that's a good point too. Um, so here, so here's something that we've addressed before, and we've actually spoken directly to Little Frankie about this, and he denies it all. We put the initial conversation out there. My and boyfriend. I know you wish. Um, <laughs> he was so sweet though. Usually, like good-looking guys aren't that nice. 
I mean, yeah, uh, wait, are they? <laughs> I don't know. It depends. I mean, I would think they, you know, it's people like that, like they're younger. They probably think they're too cool because their mom or they're on the show, but he was oh, so he's sweet. He's so humble. He's so hot too. Yeah. Like he, he was so sweet. Um, I feel like a freaking psychopath cause he's so much, he's not so much younger than us. Right. I don't know, but I think like um, seven years. he's just, he, he was very, when we met him, really sweet person and Chantal like literally thinks she's gonna marry him even though she just got engaged <laughs> but anyways there's report- my fiance is hotter okay yeah okay oh wow your fiance is <laughs> listening to this that's why he's been listening um <laughs> but hey. yeah <laughs> there's reports that Frank is pissed about something that happened with Frankie Jr. and Louis working together something went wrong so here's the tea Joe Gorka Okay, he says at the reunion that little Frankie called him after something happened with him working for Louis. This is the third time now that Joe Gorka has accused a random person of calling him about Louis. Dolores shuts that shit down immediately. Hell yeah. Yep. She denies the entire thing. She says little Frankie never called Princess Gorga. And I spoke directly to the source, which is little Frankie. Uh, and he told me that's absolutely not true. Frankie Jr. says that he never called Princess Gorka. Never. Okay. So he tells me that. And I feel so bad for even asking him or getting him involved. But Frankie Jr., aka Chantel's pretend husband, was very sweet. He doesn't want any part of this. And I contacted him today and I asked him about it. Um, And again, I went straight to the source. I asked whether he called Princess Gorka to bitch about Louis or to tell Louis anything about how he wasn't happy when he worked with him and um, if something happened when working with him. Again, I want you guys to know at the reunion when this gets brought up and when Princess says this, Dolores shuts that shit down. So why the hell would Big Frank say that though? Too why would it wasn't he back big, him up? It, it wasn't. He didn't really say that. Oh. He it was it was Joe Gorka who said that. Okay? okay, there's another reason that Frank is upset. Um, now did he act like did he try to like defend it and say that's absolutely not true? No, he was like he came for Louis, but he came for Louis for a different reason. But all I know is that Dolores shut that shit down and Joe didn't argue back. When Joe, when Dolores said that absolutely never happened, don't bring my son into this. That absolutely Good. never happened. Exactly. Don't bring the kids in, remember? Joe said, exactly. Joe said nothing. He shut the hell up right away because he's lying about it. And here's why he's lying. Frankie Jr. said, uh, again, he doesn't want to get involved, but he told me that he never complained about Lou to Joe. He says, Quote, like I said before, I had a great experience working at his RE firm and it allowed me to pivot in a great position. I really like Lou and Joe. I really don't even know why I would be brought up either. End quote. Wow. He, yep. He added that he understands lots of bad blood is out there and tempers are flaring, but he just wants to be kept out of it and that it's not true. That's straight from the source. So if you guys are hearing anything else, this is this is not sources set. This is straight from the mother effing source, and he's denying it, and he's putting it to bed. So people who are trying to put this narrative out that Frankie Jr. had this issue with Louie and that now Dolores and Teresa are on the outs, false, false, false. This is straight from the source. They're absolutely saying this is not false. Dolores and Teresa are great, and that's that. Yes, uh, you get it, girl. Yep. So that you don't let it, people talk about my boyfriend. Oh my god! What? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, I'm so glad he responded though, because that really would piss me off if we're if for us as viewers are watching it and we see that and it's like, hmm, no, that's not true. Right. I mean, so I mean, look. Now we have Joe Gorga saying that little Frankie called him to talk about a bad business issue or a bad working experience with Lou, and then we had. Princess. What's up with this Lou thing? They call him yeah. Lou? I don't know. Yeah, I guess not. I guess <laughs> I know. I was weirded out by that too. No, I mean he called him that, so I guess maybe some people do. Oh. Then yeah, <laughs> then we had Princess say David, aka Dave, Dina's husband, called Princess to talk about Lou, and it's bizarre to me that Princess Gorka is accusing people of calling him. And it never happened, but he's like willing to lie. And for the record, Dave also denied ever calling Princess. 
And why would these people even feel comfortable to call Joe about their future brother-in-law at the time, unless like Joe was constantly talking about Louis with them? Exactly. It's so weird. And like, I wish he would bring phone records, but then also you can manipulate phone records, but you can totally manipulate I know. So them. I didn't want to say that because I can yeah, make it, I can make yeah, it happen that like exactly. you called me or something yeah. or maybe they did call for a different reason. Actually, but... that's so interesting. You brought that up and I have something to talk about with that as well. So it's oh, so interesting. Okay. You, yeah. Cause you, Chantal literally has no idea. Yeah, I have no idea. I, I'm telling you, I worked and then I had to get in contact with like a bunch of people. I had to verify stories, talk like, you know, talk to this person, like just a lot happened. Um, but this and I was, was just sitting pretty. I know, right? You were living your best <laughs> life. I was like, hey, you no, can do I was this. at work today too. Oh, yeah, but yeah, you but were. like I'm not like I don't have these connects, guys. I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, this was I mean, we're all about Terry Shock yeah. has these connects. So this was before Pizza Gate, you guys was out there. So for princess to act like people are calling him and why would a 20 year old something or like a successful i think a realtor broker or whatever davis call a crook to complain about someone's business dealing it's weird it's, it's just my happen. opinion it's just my opinion that princess is a crook sorry guys just my opinion i don't know it's whatever take it however you want also i think uh, he's shady i think he's shady with things i think he's yeah well, i think he's very me. unprofessional i think that's his what his like title should be is he's just unprofessional yeah also, we went to a New Jersey event at the end of February, and Frank was good with Louis then. We were there the whole time. I feel bad because I like Frank a lot, but I'm so freaking disappointed in him. Like, I'm so disappointed in him. And I'll tell you because, guys Because you know what? I, I want to know more, too, because – but it is, it, is, it is crazy to think that he did pick a side because he's always remained so neutral and so good at remaining neutral and, like, just out of the drama that I am pissed that he, like, did have to pick a side – and he picked the wrong side and he, now he's going to like go down that path. It would it'll bother me. Yeah. I'm, I'm so upset about it just because I do like Frank and I will say like Frank is so amazing with fans. Like we saw him uh, just the way he was, the way he interacts, but you know what? So is princess Gorka. I heard is like pretty good with fans too, because they like also get off of this. Like, you know, guys, they like love attention. <laughs> We've talked about this, but guys love attention. So they love the shit, but I do love Brittany. I love you. If you're listening, and I'm sorry. And that's um, that's Frank's girlfriend. And we love her. But it's just I'm, I'm really just disappointed in him. Like, I'm sorry. Like, I am. I'm so disappointed in him. Anyways, okay. Before we get into that, another phone huge... Phone records, yeah. Yeah. No, not phone records. Yeah. Oh, okay. Another huge major T that we have is that Andy Cohen speaks to Gia. Oh. Yes. This is not out she, there. She wasn't... She wasn't a video chat, like, her aunt, like, came to the reunion... No, she's at Coachella right now, but... Uh -huh, oh, okay, girl. <laughs> yeah, get it. Um, so this is a complete exclusive. So on the season finale, after the cheating rumor gets out there, Princess Gorka in a confessional says that Gia called him and basically told him to leave Melissa, okay? Uh, so, so basically she called him two days before... Or one day, one day before Teresa's wedding, one or two days before Teresa's wedding, because that's when he says that was once the season finale taping happened, and she said, leave Melissa, okay? That's what Gia allegedly did, according to Joe, okay? Um, Andy calls Gia to ask her about this huge accusation. So this is going to be on the season finale. And Gia, and, and it's, it's real quick. It, 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 what I'm hearing is that Joe said it in a confessional, okay? Um, but, like, to even say that in a confessional, Gia denies ever... Why are you bringing up your niece? If this is such yeah. a big deal for you guys to bring up nieces and, and family and you be that uncle, you be that aunt, why are you bringing up your niece? Because he's trash. He's Literally. absolutely trash. He's a hypocrite. He's a walking hypocrite. Gia denies ever saying that. She says that she did call Joe Gorka, so she did call him, but she begged him to come to Teresa's wedding. She swears on her no-no and no not Aww, that she it. never once told her uncle that he should leave Melissa. Never. So we already know now, Dave denied, Dave said that Joe was lying, that he never called me. Uh, this that is I three never phone called calls, him. basically. Yeah, three three phone never, calls. That I never called him. Straight from the source, Dave, deny this. Frank, straight from the source, straight up denies, I never called this 50-year-old man ever to like talk about Louie, okay? And now Gia tells Andy, she swears on her grandma, her late grandma and grandpa, I absolutely never told him that. And that's Joe lying on three people. Like, you're spiraling, sir. And one day, when you are on your deathbed, I say this a lot, you are going to be so embarrassed. Like, oh God, please forgive me 
for all yeah, of this. Yeah, for what? Mm-hmm. Like all for of this show, is for fame. And all of this is to make your sister look completely like an idiot and bad. Right. You're doing yeah. this to your family. It's not like you're lying to make Jennifer look bad. It's not like you're lying to make the others right. look bad. You're doing this to make your only sister look bad. Yeah, it's pretty sick. It's twisted to lie on your knees and put it out there for no reason. And this is why where we get so passionate about this is because mm-hmm. it pisses me off so much, like how you can do that to family. Yeah, I agree. So no one believes the cheating rumor. And Andy asked the whole cast, like, does anyone believe it? Not one person raises their hand and says they believe it. I believe something happened, you guys. Because keep in mind, when this all went down, immediately Melissa deleted all her um, photos with Nick Barada. And he's he's great looking. Deleted all her photos. Deleted all the times they've liked each other's photos. There's, like, records of it beforehand. And then they both unfollowed each other. Why do that if you're not guilty of something? Yeah. So weird, you know? Um, What I can tell you is uh, I know Melissa and Margaret, they've been teasing, like, just wait till you watch the season finale. And all I'm hearing is, you know, Margaret saying that in interviews. And what I can tell you is what we've heard is that Margaret was the loudest on the season finale. Like she was the one going the craziest. And I think it's because she was the guiltiest. I mean, then why the hell would she show up at her, uh, Teresa's wedding? Right. Yeah, exactly. Oh, she, like, I heard that she was freaking the hell out. She was trying to like make it like, um, Teresa and Jennifer set them up. And yeah, I think they were trying to make it like Teresa had, um, Teresa had, or Teresa came in last and they were like, oh yeah, why else would she? And you guys, Bravo picks the order. Producers pick the order of when each person comes to an event. Just so let's make that clear. Okay. Um, but yeah, so like, I don't know why they keep saying that because to me, Margaret is going to end up looking the guiltiest. If she was go- being so loud about it, if she was acting so defensive, that's when you're like absolutely yep. the guiltiest. Mm-hmm. Um, anyways, so Teresa and Melissa were screaming at each other the entire time at the reunion. I feel bad for the editors involved because like, you know, they were, Melissa and Teresa were like cussing each other out. They were saying And this is things. the first time they have seen each other probably since before the since wedding, July. correct? So, no, since, yeah. since the beginning of August. Like August Yeah, so 4th. that's a big deal. Like, this is like, you you have all this pen, like, pent up frustration probably between family. Like, yeah. and this is your first time? Like, yeah, I'd, I'd be cussing out too. Yeah, everyone kept going back to Teresa and Melissa. I gotta point out that the scene with Andy, that or a clip that Andy puts out on Instagram, he is like, we're filming the Real House of the New Jersey reunion, and he looks at Teresa and he's like, how are you feeling? And she's like, my heart's racing. And then he looks at Melissa and she was like, I got receipts. I got more receipts. And it's like, wow, that's so sad. Like, this is all a game to you, dude. Like, Teresa's heart is racing. And Melissa is just like, I got receipts. And, like, it's like, dude, even when Kyle on Beverly Hills fights with Kathy and Kim, like, she's never talking like that. She's literally distraught. Like, I know she's a lot crying. Of she's shit. shaking. Her heart's yeah, racing. Yeah, exactly. And then I, I did hear that when Princess Gorga came out, that when Andy asked how he's feeling, he too said, my heart's racing. And so, yeah, like it just goes to show you, like this is all a game for Melissa. And it's so sad. It's so sad because this is like real life. This is like real family. Nono and Nona would be looking down and just be so disappointed in this whole thing. Okay. Um, but anywho, I just had to point that out. But so Jacqueline Larita gets brought up at the reunion and Teresa shares that Jacqueline told her that back in the day, Joe and Melissa would tell them all about Teresa's legal issues. Jacqueline had told Teresa that Joe Gorka told Jacqueline and Chris that Joe, that Princess Joe, used to speak to Joe Judice's ex-partner and that he had involvement in t- Joe and Teresa going to jail. Wow. Teresa says that she does believe it because he hated Joe Judice. And they bring up, like, the Monica Chacon thing. Remember? Was it Chacon? I don't even remember her last name. They bring up Monica, who – remember Monica? She came to Melissa she and She was, Joe's like, that lawyer. Party. Yeah, she was, no, like, No, no, she was – she was the one who was married to the attorney. Attorney, for, yes. For Joe Judice's business partner who sued Joe and Teresa back in the day. Yeah, yeah, I remember this. They had it's to kick her out of the party. Also, they had all kicked her out of the party where – that's where it all started. And Princess 
because Gorka invited this person to his housewarming party, knowing what the hell was happening. So, and Chanel, you just rewatched Jersey. Do you remember yep. that? Yeah, yeah, no, I, I exactly remember it, which yeah. is so crazy now because, like, if you if you are associated with people like that, then there's there has to be some truth to what Jacqueline is saying. Yeah, I don't. Jacqueline has no reason to lie, you guys. She literally has no reason to lie. She's at not all. coming to the show. She doesn't live in Jersey. She's not. She's yeah, not doing she's it. Nothing to do with it. She has no reason to lie. Um, and come on, you guys can't see, especially like when they weren't getting along. You can't see Princess and Melissa like trashing Teresa to them, especially when Jacqueline. And maybe got, if it wasn't Teresa, board. and maybe if it wasn't Teresa, like they couldn't stand Joe Judice, and they would do anything to get him to be not in that, and like to probably bring put him down. And they just probably didn't think that it was going to come after his own sister and put yeah. her in jail. Yeah. Um, Teresa says that she doesn't believe that Joe Gorka tried to hurt her, but that he did hate Joe. And that's exactly. why he probably oh, was there. You yeah, go. That, that's probably why he was in contact with the ex business partner who was suing Teresa and Joe Judice. Joe Gorka denies it and says he loved Joe Judice. That I'm, I'm so confused um, that he now mm. loves Joe Judice. Frank. Okay. okay. So Frank senior, he inserts himself in the conversation and he says, that he's going to speak on behalf of Joe as a lawyer. And he says that he was actually... Yeah. <laughs> what? Were yeah. you just barred? <laughs> yeah. So he says that... Yes, he was. He says that Joe... <laughs> Joe, Joe Gorka, he was actually Joe Gorka's attorney at the time this all happened. And Frank Sr. says that the feds did ask Joe to come in and speak to them, but that Princess Gorka refused. Teresa says that, yeah, he may not have talked to the FBI, but he was in contact with the partner, according to Jacqueline Larita the ex-business partner who sued and where this all started from, okay? Um, Teresa, apparently, she kept saying in Italian that in Italian, she kept telling Joe, you you broke my heart. You you broke my heart in a million pieces. You broke my heart. So she, I guess, like, apparently she said it oh, multiple so times. Sad. And she kept repeating it. He did say it back to her in Italian. Okay. Uh, there, moment, I don't know. <laughs> I guess we'll I don't see. know. I, yeah, I don't know. And it's like, and you okay. see Melissa probably, like, melting in a puddle. Yeah. There is a point where Teresa ends up walking out and crying. And I'm being told that it looked like Joe was bothered, but he didn't run after her. I don't, I don't, this is what I'm being told. Um, Joe also tells Andy that he doesn't regret that he didn't come to the wedding, which is so <gasps> funny. Yeah. And it's so funny because at BravoCon, he was like, I regret it. Or I think it was at BravoCon. Somewhere he said he regrets it. Now back to, because he's so hot and cold. He doesn't yeah, it's regret like, what it. is it? Yeah. Make up your mind. Um, Jack, Jackie and Jen Fessler, they barely spoke. Jen Fessler didn't really speak at all. And I think that's a bad move for Fessler. I think that, I think the show is done with Jackie as far as her. I mean, after the reunion, she did discuss her eating disorder and uh, nothing really much. They were barely out there, but Fessler barely spoke. And I just thought that was a weird move. Like, why would you not? You actually ended up becoming a lot, for the most part, you've gotten a lot of great feedback. Why would you not speak up? Yeah, because then now you could have put your place into it. Yeah, very weird. Stake that your claim. It. I mean, yeah, yeah. State your claim. Stake your claim. I don't know what that means, you guys. Oh, okay, guys, go after her right now because they're going to tell you I'm right. <laughs> Whatever. Um. Okay, so you guys, the guys go in on Louis. Okay, all of them were attacking Louis. I think except Bill and Polly. Frank was speaking the most, you guys. Frank Sr. Well, then what other guys? Oh, there's Joe, Joe, and Frank. Like, what other there's, guys are there? There's Joe. There's Joe. Oh, wait. There's Joe Bonino, Joe Gorka. Um, and uh, Frank. And the other guy. What's the other guy? Uh, Rachel's oh. husband. Oh, Bravo I don't care about him. Mm -hmm. Oh, John. John Fuda. John Fuda. Um, and John Fuda, like, like, what are, he, what do you have to talk about? Like, you just I'll got on the show. You, he came with like a receipt, man. They like really wanted to be on the show. Those people. Okay. So, um, Frank was speaking the most. Frank says that Louie apparently leaked something after being with him. And that's part of the reason he's upset. They all feel like Louie did a smear campaign against them. I'll have more details about that. We'll, we'll get into that, um, on a part two. Um, but Frank feels like there was like a smear campaign and they had names about it or whatever. Uh, that's according to, again, this is just so weird. Cause at the end of February, they were in such great terms that it's like, when could this have happened? I will say something, you guys, you know, Frank is going hard. He's going hard on 
Louie, and just so you know, I know exclusively that Frank and Joe Gorka are actually trying to uh, get their own show. So they are like, they have like a pilot or they're like, what? Um, like what yeah. the hell kind of show would they get? Yeah. They're like talking to networks, trying to get a show. This is an absolute fact. Just so you guys know, this is an exclusive from all about Terry. It's that they are trying to get a show. So it's, I'm almost like, you know, maybe like he's I trying to show that he actually has an opinion. And it's going to stick a step, like do I don't know, go crazy. It's not like they're going to do like a real husbands or something, but they might. Who knows? But they're very tight and close because like Princess Gorga loves fame. You know, he likes attention, and who knows if he thinks he's coming back. So to to secure a spot, and also you guys, Joe's like way more famous than Melissa. Melissa stayed on the show longer than she should have, and it's because of Joe. It's because of Joe, and it's obviously because of Teresa. So Joe like wants to be the center of attention and he's probably taken a lot of moments from Melissa because he typically he outshines her um, because he's always like so vocal and talking. But yeah, they are trying to get their own show. So I'm almost like, okay, well, did Frank boss that because of him wanting to get this own show and, you know, showing his like loyalty, like him and Joe are super tight and Joe's like kind of manipulated him. I don't know. I'm just sad because I like Frank and uh, I'm very annoyed, but I know that I'm very curious to see what, how it, it, this all plays out. We'll have more details. I'm going to talk, yeah. about, I'm going to talk more details. There's just so much right now. And I just wanted to get this out there. I wanted to get some of it out there because there's some things leaking. We wanted to wait again. I wanted to verify with multiple people before I say something. Um, okay. So John and Rachel, okay. John and Bravo lover, one, two, three, four, Fuda. Okay. <laughs> they accuse Louis of apparently, never gets old. Yeah. They accuse Louis of apparently reaching out to his baby mama John Fuda brings out an envelope, but he never opens it or he never takes anything out. So he doesn't show proof. Louis absolutely denies that he reached out to the mom who was in jail. And I mean, why would he like, no offense, no disrespect to the wife. Like she's in like jail or she's like in a halfway house right now. Like she's not someone you would trust to like tell something to probably. Um, and like, how would she get in contact? And also she's like spoke to the press. So she's not like someone you would you know, go and talk. And to why you. would, and why would Louie need to go to her? It's not like that there's a problem between Bravo yeah, Lover and Louie and Teresa. Exactly. Like, I don't, I'm confused. Like that's the last person they're that they need to on. That, you're, like, you're irrelevant. Louis, they're trying to say like Louie did this smear campaign against them. Like they all came gun guns blazing on this man. Um, Louie handled himself well. I mean, he shook everyone's hand at the end. Joe Gorka called. <laughs> he yeah. needs to stop. He needs to stop yeah. doing that. Like you're pissing I me swear. off. Stop. Stop giving any of them any ounce of your niceness. Like enough. Right. Joe Gorka calls Louis a woman abuser. Um, and then he asks a Louis, woman abuser. Yeah. The same man who's literally called his, like the same man who like assaulted Jennifer at Bravo con dude and has called his sister scum, blah, 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 screamed, went crazy. Just has, has showed he has like temper issues. Um, and then he asked Louis to take a shot with him at one point. Again, it's all a game to them. And, and it's just so sad to me that it's all this like game to them because and then you like have you and then you have things. joe yeah then you have joe at watch what happens live a week ago basically saying it's not done it's not done it's like make it up your sense. mind yeah he's all over the place uh rachel and jennifer apparently get into it about like the nose and a lot of <laughs> a, a lot of the times when the girls were asked about situations that happened they weren't even able to talk on it because it would go back to melissa and Teresa, which kind of sucked like because we're so over things. it. We're yeah, so over so it. We're Melissa and Teresa. But they, exactly. But they both they both couldn't stop. They both could not stop. There's like, you know, Teresa did like cuss a lot and Melissa did cuss at a lot. And Teresa apparently called like Margaret and Melissa a whore. Um, I, Teresa's fucking done with them. Like there's like, I know that in the past, Teresa, she's never spoken out. And a lot of people are like, oh, well, it's because of Louie. And it's like, no, first off, they've always had problems. The reason she never spoke out is because of her parents. Now they're in a bad place. She's tried. It didn't work. She doesn't give a shit anymore. Her parents aren't here. She, you know, when her parents are here, were here, she don't want to stress them out. So yeah, she let loose because they're at a bad point right now. And she already tried with them and she's sick of it. She's literally disgusted with her brother and all and that. And like the done. last chance that you could have given her was like, you know, when she was welcoming a new guy into her life, like they could have welcomed him welcome him as a brother and they could have had a united family but they didn't do that they did the opposite so like why yeah. would she care about them yeah exactly rachel and jennifer um already said that they get into it about the nose sorry i just i'm reading my notes i'm trying to get it all in there okay so i heard danielle went off she was cussing a lot as well like staten island times 100 and her came out 
Did, I guess they were trying to pin it like Danielle set up Melissa with like Jennifer and Teresa. And Danielle denies ever setting up Melissa. She was apparently really intense at the reunion. Her and Rachel do end up making peace at the reunion. I think it's a good move for Bravo Lover 1234 to make um, peace. I heard that. I also heard that Bravo Lover, uh, that Jennifer calls out Rachel for Bravo Lover 1234 as a username and her being a fan, which again, nothing wrong with that, <laughs> but her denying it. Yeah. And Andy yelled at Melissa and Teresa a couple times. He barely, you guys, he barely got questions out. They didn't even discuss BravoCon with Melissa and Jennifer and Joe. Wow. They did not discuss like anything, you guys. And have, did they ever discuss that on like a Watch What's Heaven's Live or no? No, not really. No. Because I, I think I wish like then Bravo she brought was it pissed up, about Jennifer it. Brought it up. It was it was impossible just because again it kept going to Melissa and Teresa and they're screaming, they're cussing and blah blah blah. Um. So yeah, that happened. Okay. So I feel like I missed a part. Um. That I wrote phone records. Something. Did you do phone records? You no, said I'm... you said John Fuda had an envelope. Oh yeah, that was a baby mama step. Um, yeah. Okay. No, no, there was a, I, no. So they they bring up the Donna Marcos the the Donna Marco stuff. Okay, which is Melissa's mom, and they bring up like that. Uh, you know, Melissa's mom likes terrible tweets about Teresa. So does her aunt. So does her sisters. Uh, and Teresa points out. It, the last ones that were vile were um, in May of 2022. You tried to make it like it was 13 years ago. It was like May of 2022 on my, on my wedding day. All this stuff. Um, there's tweets. And you know what Melissa says? Melissa literally looks at her and says, she doesn't deny it this time. She just said, and this was before you guys, just, just so you know the full story. This was before Donna knew, which is Melissa's mom, before Melissa's mom knew whether she was going to be invited to the wedding or not. Um, so this was before that, that she's like liking terrible things, even about Teresa's appearance, which is just like super mean that she would be liking that. Um, and d d Melissa doesn't deny it. She then says that, um, my mom likes everything on Twitter. She doesn't even know how to use it. Oh my God. Shut the hell up. Yeah. You guys, that's exactly what she said. The most interesting Stop. thing is uh, like, yeah. she pisses me off. Mm -hmm. So never much. owns it. She never owns it. Um, and Andy literally where's Lisa run up? Where's I I can't stand oh, girl. Lisa, where is she? And Andy doesn't even press it. He literally doesn't even like the whole time. I guess he didn't press Melissa one time about well because she said. he kind of did a little bit, and then it's like he has to bring it up again, and he's like, "Okay, I'm over you as a, you being a liar." Yeah, Melissa was mad at Jennifer for telling Danielle the cheating rumor, but you guys also like just so you guys know, once like producers know about something, they they're gonna push, make you do it. They push. They're like, "All right, well, you need to you need to bring it out." And so it's like Melissa knows that, but again, you know, it's all about narrative. It's all about how things look. You know, that's what it is. Now, and first of all, she has no, like, we're, it's not, her loyalty is not to you, Melissa. You've yeah. never done anything to be nice to her. You guys have always had bad on bad terms. You guys are trying to get to a better place, but she doesn't yeah. owe you anything. There was just so much, you guys, that wasn't discussed. That's super disappointing. And, and I'll get into this, but Jennifer does, like, kind of make peace with Margaret. And she does kind of make peace with Melissa. Not necessarily, like, peace, but, like, nothing. It's not like it leaves so bad. So I will say that. Um, that's interesting. And, yeah. Andy Cohen says he has never gotten more hate tweets about a housewife than he has Melissa. <laughs> Melissa accuses Louie of being the reason that she's been getting so much hate. Oh my God. Somebody, Just yeah. come to, come to our comment section. All these people are yeah. real. We've, we, we speak to you guys all the time. There's, yeah. there's nothing fake so about crazy. these people. She says that Louie is, again, back to the smear campaign. They're accusing Louie of, like, having a smear cam campaign against everyone, uh, like, hiring a PR, which Louie did hire a PR for a new business that him and his son are doing. Melissa accuses Louie of buying bots to do that. You guys, the thing is, I've been around since 2012. I'm a real person. I'm not getting paid. And if I was getting paid, I wouldn't be working corporate and having all about Terry's as a side business. I would be like, hell yeah, people pay me so I don't have to work, right? I, I wouldn't be doing that. Um, so I'm a real person. And that's always why like, I made sure we put my identity out there, Laura's identity out there, now Chantel's identity out there. Because like we weren't hiding from anything. Um, I, I mean, a whole ass website got made called Fame Horkas. Horkas. Sorry, I always say, I know you guys yell at me because I say Horkas wrong, but Horkas. Um, 
where it was uh, it was built on fact checking the Gorkas. It was made in 2012 by some man, not bots, um, because people were so over Melissa lying. And that so, was back in the day. So, huh? Like, I'm, how day, many freaking guys, times this is, people, has this been happening? I've, I've, I've I've established some new relationships with people who are like, thank you for calling this out. You guys, thank you. Like I didn't see it. I see it now. I look at their profile. They're real people. And I talk to them quite a bit now. I've, I feel like we've established relationships with a lot of you guys and we love it. We love talking to you guys again. I'm sorry. I haven't responded to anyone today. I will respond later. Um, but yeah, like for her to go ahead and say, these are like bots. And the reason I think she says that is because she fucking hires bots to like come for people um yeah like how do you know what it is Melissa, you like, do it yeah melissa's really not liked and i think it's because she'll say something and it's an actual lie and we all know it's a lie because we can fact check it um but she'll put it out there and think because she puts it out there it's the truth and it's like just like jacqueline larita said you lied four times about your nose job and when i saw how you could lie with a straight face like i knew that was a big red flag huge red flag the final thing I'm going to talk about, and I'm going to, we'll touch on this more about on a part two is, so Margaret accuses, um, Louie of uh, like reaching out to her son at his work line. And she shows like a phone record of his number. And then Teresa ends up showing, oh, here's a phone record of you calling me yesterday. And here's your number. Did you call me yesterday? And Margaret's like, no. And she's like, exactly. Oh. So, I know. I was kind of shocked about that, to be honest. So that's going to be the big thing with Margaret. I'm sure, like, people are going to try to, like, put that out there. I'm going to have more details for you guys. But, again, I just wanted to get, like, the The majority, out there. yeah. Yeah. We did see how all the ladies look. Chantel, what do you think? Okay. So they did this, like, blue and gold and silver theme. Like, you know how, like, they always have Yellow. these themes? Oh, yellow. Yeah, like a yellow, which I, I take as gold, I guess. But, which was um, weird. I don't know why they did what? that for them. It was like yellow gold, yeah. Okay, no. <laughs> and no. they had, maybe because I think it was like Arabian. Like, they had this like Turkish coffee, like type vibe. I don't know. Maybe they're giving some something to that like dinner yeah, i don't like, freaking it know was, it was yeah the setup is gonna be like turkish vibes with, yeah, like, yeah which yeah. hey jennifer good job yeah um but yeah so like my i know i'm gonna be biased about this but i swear i thought Teresa looked unreal she just looked so different i think from all her looks like i don't think i loved her last year's look she had this like weird headpiece in and this year her like outfit is amazing and then her hair was amazing she did this like bob she looked so good what did you think she about Teresa? yeah she looked great her body you guys is freaking banging i know she always like posts on her story that she's like she's like a trainer and she's always like i think she gets like trained twice a day her body looked crazy great i mean um, remember she did that competition she's always been into like yeah. fitness since like she's left yeah the you know school <laughs> oh left the, you know, the camp yeah yeah camp. um i thought who did jennifer, you think looked the best so i thought jennifer looked good i liked her hair pulled back um you know what's weird i think dolores looked good i actually thought Danielle looked like amazing. Oh, you didn't think I, so? Yeah, you know, she looked great. She looked great. I think her hair is just like, you know, the style is just oh, like Chantel so back in the day. Her, yeah. Chantal said her hair is like, so three years ago. Melissa looks good. I think Melissa always looks good, but it's not like nothing special. Like her dress was kind of mm, weird. Her she, dress was like, weird. I don't like yeah. her hair. I don't like her hair pulled up. I don't know if it's cause she's getting skinnier and then her like strong features are like popping up like her nose, whatever. So it's like, I, I like her hair more down and I don't like her hair up. Um, I think to be honest, Bravo lover one, two, three, four looked the worst. Oh my God. What was her dress? Hideous. Her dress was probably, I don't know if you guys are going to disagree with us. I'm so it's, sorry if it's like it's a, designer, a yellow though. dress. I'm sure yeah, it's like, it's yeah, a it's gold yellow. It's, it's okay. It's gold yellow. It's <laughs> not. Yeah. Like it is. It, it, uh, yeah. You're right. I guess there is like, it's like a mustardy. I felt, but yes. It's, yes. It's like mustard. It's not cute. And her hair was disgusting. It was not cute at all. Um, I mean, she's a beautiful girl. Let's not, let's not say that. Cause you, I know y'all are going to come for us and be like, how the it just hell didn't do you look, look like her? It just yeah. didn't look like her. I don't know. And yeah, then and it didn't it, look like Margaret, you guys, oh my God. Margaret Nasty. is trying to be like a 22 year old girl. Girl, She's literally wearing this dress that looks like Revolve. She's wearing it. Yes. Like, that like a, a 24 year old wears. Yes. A literally Revolve dress or something. Like and, it's like a corset top where her skin's yes. showing. Oh my God. And yeah. it's like, okay, we get it. You're on Ozempic. You're skinny. Like you're old, like enough, like be a little bit more classy or classic like Disgusting. i can't with her look she so definitely she did the worst. the worst yeah absolutely um her hair bun like no she just like no she looked terrible you guys not good at all 
So that's my opinion on that. I mean, that's really what we have so far for the reunion. You guys, we're going to have so much more. But again, I wanted to get it out there. Go on all about TRH.com after you listen to this. We'll have all of this on there um, so that you guys could read this up on it. This was like as well. amazing for me. I like love this. T- like, this uh, yeah. is awesome. I know. I just felt bad because I haven't answered. I'm going to answer people, but I she hasn't answered. answered me. I kept saying, Hey, I know. what are we I'm like? So what do busy. we have? Like, what do we have? Like, what did you, what, who'd you talk to? Like, what's going on? <sighs> you guys, I got home last night and then I, I don't know why I didn't take today off. And so then I'm like, Oh my gosh. So I was working and, whatever. And then I was like, crap, I need to like, you know, then the kids come home from school and I have to figure all this stuff out and then talk to a million people. But that's what we have. You guys, we will be back, um, for a recap. Thank you guys so much for listening. If you're new here, listen to our old episodes. We have so much insight on how things work behind the scenes. Yes. Um, I know that you guys, like I always say this, leave us a review. We appreciate the reviews so much. Let me know what you guys think of this episode. Let Chantal know what you think of this episode, but thank you guys so much for listening. We will have more for you guys. Bye guys. Bye. Be sure to check out allabouttrh.com for everything Royal Housewives and Bravo TV. And please make sure to subscribe and follow us on Instagram at allabouttrhpodcast.